Here are the key ideas when we're looking at two independent groups um, and doing experiments with these two independent groups. So the key idea is that we have a group of people um, at the beginning. Okay, we've got this group of people um, and we need to divide them into two groups. We need to split them into the control group and the treatment group. Okay, those are the two groups that we need to split them into. Now, how we split them into those two groups, we do that by randomly allocating. All right, so that is the clue, is that we are randomly allocating people from um, into one of these two groups. Once we've done that, then we go and do the response. So we do some kind of test or measurement um, with those two groups, and then we can compare the results. So, um, in the analysis, we want to do key ideas, shape, centre, spread. All right, so let's have a look at an example. So this is looking at the time standing on one leg, and its students were standing either on their dominant leg or their non-dominant leg. So I'm right-handed, the right side of my body is slightly stronger than my left, so that would, for me, for mean, if I was on my dominant side, I'd be standing on my right leg, um, if I was doing my non-dominant, it would be on my left leg. So we've taken this group of students, we've randomly split them into either standing in the dominant group or the non-dominant group. And now we've got the results here. So we want to talk about shape, centre and spread first of all. Okay, so think about our shape. So if I was to do our graph over the data, um, hopefully we can see for the dominant, if I look at where the median is, Think about the length on that side versus the length on that side. It's slightly more spread out on the right hand side. So I would say that this is right skewed. Okay. And equally for the non-dominant, it's a little bit easier to see. That distance versus that distance. Again, it's longer tail on the right hand side. So that is going to be right skewed. Okay. So that's our first comment. So the data itself, it always has to be in context. It's all talking about the time that students can stand on either their dominant or non-dominant leg. Um, and those times are right skewed. Then I'm going to justify it. How do I know they're right skewed? The longer tail on the right hand side with the data on the left um, more clumped together. Okay, so that's our first part. So um, the time students um, were able to stand on both their, oh gosh, I can't spell both, um, on both their dominant and non-dominant leg um, is right skewed because um, because we've got a much longer tail on the right hand side. So that's our first part, is that shape, okay? Then I want you to think about comparing the medians for your center. So I want to look and say, right, well, where one median is about there, the other median is just about there, and I can find that more exactly and say, right, the median is... For dominant leg was 115.5 seconds. The median for the non-dominant leg is, is 51 seconds. Which one's longer? People could stand on their dominant leg for longer. How much longer? What is the difference? Okay. Um, and that's when we would do that 115.5, take away the 51, and get our difference between the two medians. So that would be our centre. Okay, and we'll write that up in a second. Then the other part is our spread. So I want you to think about how spread out the data is. So think about just the box, okay? So just think about how wide that box there is and how wide that box there is. And we should be able to see that this box here is not as wide as that box there. And to back that up, I can do my interquartile range. Remember, interquartile range is upper quartile minus lower quartile. So I can do upper quartile minus lower quartile for the dominant leg, 
and upper quartile minus lower quartile for the non-dominant leg. Equally, I could also look at the standard deviation um, and compare those standard deviations as well. So that leads us to this right up here. Okay, so both the distributions that they can stand on dominant and dominant leg are skewed to the right because they've got a longer tail on that right. Center, they can stand on their dominant leg. The median time they can do that for is 4.5 seconds longer. I'm comparing the difference, okay, than the median time they can stand on their non-dominant leg. And the evidence is there's my median of 115 and my median of 51. Then spread, I've gone and calculated the interquartile range. So my interquartile range for the dominant is 41.5, the non-dominant is 23.5. And so we can see this one here is less spread out um, than the not dominant one. Okay, and that's what I want to say there. So the spread of the middle 50% of data for the time that students can stand on the dominant is more spread out than the middle 50% for the time they can stand on their non-dominant leg. Evidence is dominant leg IQR and non-dominant leg IQR. Okay, so that would be my analysis. Shape, center, spread. Then I need to do my conclusion. So I need to think about answering that question. In, in terms of answering my investigation questions, we've got to think about the fact that we were randomly allocating the participants into two groups. So because we were just randomly allocating them in there, could our results have been just due to chance? Or do the results tend to be higher for one of those groups? Okay. So in order to answer that question and think about, you know, is this possible just by chance? Could I just have randomly got a group of people mixed up that happened to have slightly better times? I'm going to do a randomization test. And that is going to look at whether that difference between the medians um, is just due to random chance or whether we've got enough evidence to say that some treatment could cause an effect on that response. So in particular, we're looking for the tail proportion and we are looking at comparing that to our 10% or 0 0.1. If it is less than 10%, you've got enough evidence. If it's bigger than 10%, there is not enough evidence. So it means that if we don't have enough evidence, then any difference that we could see could be just due to random chance. Whereas if we've got a really small probability, then we have got enough evidence and we know that it's not likely just to be due to chance alone. There's actually something more going on in it. So let's have a look at this example of standing on one leg. And what we've got there, I'm going to look at that p that, that probability here. And I can see the, for the randomization test, and there's another little video that I'll, that's um, the allocated there for you to watch, that randomization test tells us when they've repeated this um, simulation a thousand times, from that thousand times, this median difference of 64.5 seconds occurred zero times. Okay, so to get a median difference of 64.5 or more, to get a difference between the medians that large, never happened when they did this randomization test a thousand times. So we're going to compare that to that cutoff, remember 10%, 0.1. This is going to be smaller than that, which means I do have enough evidence. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to interpret that value of zero out of the thousand. And so I'm going to say none of that thousand differences were produced, were as big as that observed difference of 64.5 seconds. Okay. So that means my tail proportion is 0%, and that difference of 64% there is not as unlikely just to be due to random chance. So that means I can say I have got enough evidence that standing on your dominant leg has an effect on the length of time you can stand for the students that I tested. Okay. I can then go and talk about improvements. How could I improve the accuracy? Because if I can improve the precision of my measuring, 
then that would increase the precision of my results as well. Okay. Um, limitations. The I've only done it using students at OSC. So it means that my results are only applicable to those specific students that I tested. I might be able to suggest or refer that it could be extended to other students in Year 13 at OSC. Um, because I think that the students I've got in my Stats 3 class would be representative of other Year 13 Stats students, of other Year 13 students. So I could suggest that they could be extended, but the results themselves only apply to those I experimented on. Okay, and in particular, I can't assume that they could be applied to people that were younger than people I had in my experiment. Could be that younger people do something quite different or older people have quite different patterns. All right. So those are the kinds of things I would want to talk about.